One of the goals of this series of videos is to get you involved in using Tinkercad. It is a product developed by Autodesk. It is free, but you have to have internet access to use it. You can't use it offline. You have to log in to use it. And you really can't save anything to your own computer. But it is free, and it is very versatile and very powerful. So I'm going to jump right into a Tinkercad project and start talking about something. I'm not going to show you how to use Tinkercad. I'll give you uh, kind of a rough, bumpy ride into it, but you're going to have to research that on your own. You're going to have to go to Tinkercad.com. You're going to have to create your own uh, account and go in and create your own projects, your, your own projects. Yes. So... Let me show you roughly how to find it and what a project looks like. I googled Tinkercad and this is what came up. Now you don't see Tinkercad, you see it in my search, but you see the first things that come up are advertisements that are trying to distract you into purchasing something that they think is relevant to Tinkercad. It's not. So you want to scroll down until you see Tinkercad.com, from mine to design in minutes. So click on that, and now you're going to have to sign up. I can't sign up for you. I can log in. So let's assume that you have signed up, and you can log in and do something. So what we're going to do in this little video is just to whet your appetite. So I'm going to say log in. I'm going to say personal accounts, email or username. There's my email and probably my password, I hope. Okay, it is. So you see up there, TP underscore Gates underscore my papa. My daughter gave that email address to me years ago when I was in the Dominican Republic. Everything was in Spanish. And I called her in the States and told her to create me an email account. And that's how I got stuck with that. Okay, so I'm going to open up a circuit that I created. So I'll go down here, see it says Tinker This. These are different circuits that I've created for one purpose or the other. So I'm going to go to this one. And this actually represents a flashlight in a sense. So this circuit on top here is a flashlight. You got a, fla a light bulb, two batteries and a slide switch. So I'm going to try to move this around. As a matter of fact, I'm going to delete some of this. This is the exact same circuit as this one, but they changed the look of their batteries. See, if I bring in a one and a half volt battery over here, you see they no longer have the terminal on this end and this end. Instead, they got two terminals up top here, a positive and a negative. I don't like that. But that's what we're going to have to deal with. So I'm going to delete. I'm just hitting delete. And we'll, we'll leave this circuit there for now. And we'll delete this circuit. So I'm just selecting and hitting the delete key. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we don't need that switch. So I'm going to delete the wires, the conductors. So now we have two 1.5 volt AA batteries here. We have a light bulb and we have a switch. Those are the components of a flashlight. So I'm going to put my mouse here, drag it over here, click. That gives me a wire connected. I'm going to click here, over, up, across, down and over. So I have a wire now connected from the plus end of the battery over to the bulb. Now in a flashlight, it would be the other way around. Typically the plus end of the battery goes in first and then another plus end and these two connect together. There's no wire here in a flashlight. They are butted right up against each other, the plus to the minus. Now I'm going to skip the switch and I'm going to connect directly to that terminal. So I have a complete circuit now to the light bulb. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit start simulation. You see the light bulb goes on, right? Now watch the light bulb, stop simulation, it goes out. Now I'm going to 
delete this wire and I'm going to bring over another wire and notice I can't just leave it in space. I have to connect it to something. So I'm going to say escape. This slide switch right here has three connections. The one in the middle is the common and that's terminal one and terminal two. So a slide switch gives you the ability to put a conductor between the middle pin and either pin, depending on which way you slide the switch. So I'll bring a wire over up to that pin and then come from this pin over to this end down to the battery. Now I'm not taking time to make this stuff neat. See, I could square this up, grab this one, see the blue lines that pop up to make it square. And as you can see, the bulb's not really square. So we'll tidy it up a little bit more here just for art's sake. So right now the switch is connecting terminal two with the common, not connecting terminal one with terminal with the common. So if I start the simulation, <clears throat> you see the light bulb is off. So if I click on the switch, this, see that it's slid over, off, on. Now in your flashlight, you're probably not going to have a single pole, double throw slide switch like that. It's only going to have two connections, these two right here. And when you slide the switch forward, it connects this conductor with this conductor and turns the light bulb on. Understand that these two batteries are chemically producing electricity. So each battery has two elements. What goes down through the middle of the battery is a carbon rod. And what goes around the outside is more or less a zinc shell. And the rod is much smaller than the inside of the shell. And so the, they pack the inside of the shell with a paste, a chemical paste. And then the carbon rod is suspended in between. And as soon as the carbon rod, the paste and the zinc come in contact, a chemical reaction takes place and the chemical reaction starts creating positive and negative ions. And the negative ions build up on the negative pole and the positive ions on the positive pole. And when you pull the electron away from an atom, that free electron is a negative ion and the atom missing the electron is a positive ion and there, it's like stretching a rubber band. So as you pull that electron away from that atom and make it a positive ion, those two charges are attracting each other. So it's like stretching a rubber band. So the chemical reaction continues to do that until the, the level of the pressure, the voltage pressure that's holding them apart is equal to the pressure that's trying to pull them back together. So it'd be like you stretching a rubber band, not until it breaks, but until you've run out of strength and your arms can stretch it no more, but it's not necessarily stretched as far as it could go. But there's a balance there between the force that's stretching it and the force that's trying to pull it back together. So these two batteries, actually they're cells, they're dry cells, People call them batteries, but a battery is two or more. So these two cells together form a three volt battery. So they add together in series one and a half plus one and a half. Now to prove that we're kind of jumping ahead now, just wetting your, your appetite. So I'm going to go search for a meter, multimeter, and I'm going to drag it over here. So this would be like a meter that you use to test things. So I'm going to connect up the leads of the meter to the positive end of the battery. Then I'm going to connect up the negative lead of the meter. Remember, I'm just clicking and dragging here and not trying to be perfectly neat. Now I'm going to start the simulation and notice that the meter says that there is 1.47 volts across that battery. Well, it says it's 1.5 volts. However, the reality is if a battery is rated at 1.5 volts, it's 1.5 volts when you have no load. So I'm going to turn this off. See, now it reads 1.5. But I want to turn it on 
it drops because we're now passing current flow through the battery and the internal resistance of the battery is dropping the voltage. Now that's ahead of our schedule here, but you cannot test a battery without a load on it. So right now there's no load on the battery. The flashlight's not turned on. It reads one and a half volts. When I turn it on, the voltage drops because under load, it does not produce the same amount of pressure. Now, I said that these two together give you three volts. So I'm going to turn this back off. I'm going to delete this probe for the meter. And I'm going to take and bring it over further and drop it there. I'm going to start the simulation. Now you see it says three volts. So when I'm across both batteries, they, the voltages add in series. Voltage adds in series. So if you want four and a half volts, add another battery in series here, end to end. If you want six volts, add four of them together. Now watch what happens when I turn on the load. That three volts do drops to 3.94. And that is the amount of pressure or voltage that is lost on the internal resistance of these batteries. They're not a free lunch. There's no such, such thing as a free lunch. So if you're testing batteries with a meter, it could measure one and a half volts and be pretty much a dead battery because there's no load on it. There's one other type of meter that you can put in here, and that's an amp meter that measures current. So I'm going to stop the simulation and we'll drag this is getting tricky because I have to connect up the meter leads to the right locations in the circuit in order for it to work correctly. In other words, you can't just throw the meter leads any place you want and expect a positive result. Okay, so remember this is the amp meter and I need to hook my voltmeter back up. Now we start the simulation and notice that the current that goes through the light bulb, so electron flow goes from negative through the bulb, through the switch, through the amp meter, and back to positive through the battery, and that's your continuous circuit. But notice that the amp meter reads minus because I have it hooked up backwards in a sense. Now, it, it works that way. You got 61.2 milliamps, that's thousandths of an ampere. So let me stop the simulation and I'm going to delete this wire. Actually, I have to delete them both. It doesn't give you an easy way to replace. Start the simulation again. Now you see there's no minus sign in front of the 61.2 milliamps. So milliamps or an amp meter measures amperes. That's current flow. And the, an amp meter has to be inserted in the flow. So the electricity is going minus, positive, minus, through the bulb, through the switch, through the meter, and back to the positive side of the battery. But the voltmeter is not in the flow of the current. It is measuring the pressure, the electromotive force, the pressure from the negative to the positive terminal. So that ought to be enough to whet your appetite of using Tinkercad. So it's it's on you to get find Tinkercad on the internet, go in and create an account, and you might even go in and create a battery. I have a multimeter selected here, but let's delete that. I have to stop the simulation, my bad. And then I can delete multimeter and go back to the basic components. So here's all your components that you can work with. Now, if you jump in here and just start throwing stuff together and connecting up wires, you're going to mess up your learning process. You've got to be patient and follow along step by step. Otherwise, your, the information in your brain will be scattered and it won't connect together and it won't make any sense. So let's leave it right there. And then in the next video, we're going to go back to talking about you know, what electricity and magnetism are. This was just enough to whet your appetite. Start simulation. You've got 2.94 volts with 61.2 milliamps. From that, you could calculate the amount of power or watts by multiplying 61.2 thousandths of an amp times 2.94 volts. 
and that would give you the actual power dissipated to create lumens in this light bulb. Don't worry about that for now. Okay, we're just introducing you to stuff, back up, do more basics, and we'll keep jumping back and forth like this. That was really a lot to absorb in your second session. But hang in there. You just keep at it, keep paying attention, keep thinking about it, watching the videos over and over again. This is nothing you're going to learn overnight. And if you try to jump ahead and just experiment and throw stuff together thinking you're going to invent something, hit simulation and make a million dollars, you're dreaming. So you got to learn all the basics before you can be clever and invent stuff. Thank you.